Hi guys, today we're reading Be the Change, a grandfather Gandhi story. This is written by Arun Gandhi and Bethany Hedges and it's illustrated by Evan Turk. The world knows him as the Mahatma Great Soul. To me, he is grandfather. Life at the Sevagran Ashram. Grandfather's service village revolved around the sun. Before daybreak, we left our beds. All 350 followers gathered for the morning prayer meeting. Peace descended on us like the rays of the sun. All religions were welcome. The purpose of ashram life was to live simply and non-violently. Each day was filled from sunrise to sunset with service. The ashram worked as one, washing clothes, planting vegetables, picking fruit, spinning yarn. Anything that needed doing was done for the good of all. Grandfather had dubbed our work Experiments in Truth. There were 11 vows of ashram living. The one I found the hardest was the vow not to waste. And it was an important one, a cornerstone of grandfather's teachings. I wasn't sure how not wasting food or other items made life nonviolent, but did my best to follow the path put before me. Bab Bapuji said I would understand in time, but I had already lived at Sivgaram for more than a year. Soon, Grandfather asked that I accompany him to Pune. I was happy to get the break from ashram life, from waking early and working hard. But at the Nature Cure Clinic, our routine was much the same. The same vows, the same self-discipline. When Grandfather talked, thousands came, overflowing the gardens. People young and old spilled into the streets. I stood with him and listened as he spoke about Stegaran, passive nonviolence. When nonviolence is an accepted way of life, it must be pervade the whole being and not be applied to isolated acts, Bapuji said. How is I to understand that? It hurt my head to even think about. Yet when grandfather spoke, something in me stilled, even if afterward my thoughts grew cloudy. One afternoon, on my way home from lessons, I'd had enough. As I walked, I tossed my nubby pencil in the air, tired of my vow not to waste, tired of not understanding. It bounced into the grass. I left it there on purpose. That evening, I asked Bapuji for a new pencil. This morning you had what appeared to be a perfectly good pencil, Grandfather said. It was too small. I threw it away, I argued. I didn't share what I was really thinking. I was a Gandhi. Didn't I deserve a new pencil? It was not too small this morning. Grandfather smiled his toothless grin. And what of your vow? The one not to waste? I stared at my sandaled feet. A vow is a promise to yourself before it is one to others. Why is a nubby pencil so important, I asked. It is not the pencil, but you that is important. Bapuji patted my shoulder. Bapuji was talking in riddles. Why wasn't there a simple explanation? He walked me to the door. You will have to go and look for it. Would I really have to be search for a nub of a pencil? But it's after dark. Good thinking, Aran. You will need a torch. He handed me a flashlight and pointed me toward the light. I set off into the dark. My face burned with shame. Grandfather had already taught me so much, and here I had more to learn. I was a disappointment to him, to myself. I retraced my steps, past the bench with the broken leg, past a pack of stray dogs. I stopped when I came to the scrubby grass that I'd cut across hours earlier. 
Kneeling, I ran my fingers through the, co the coarse stalks. Nothing. Above, the stars seemed to mock me. Find it, find it, they twinkled, taunting. Finally, after hours of searching, I found it. I stuffed the pencil in my pocket and trudged back to Grandfather's cottage. Did you recover the pencil? Papuji asked when I returned. I had, but I still hadn't discovered what waste and nonviolence had to do with each other or what they had to do with me. We returned to Savagaran. There, Grandfather set out to teach me the deeper meaning of the rule not to waste, just as not monsoon season had come. The skies erupted. For days on end, the rains beat the dry, cracked ground. The earth became messy and, and muddy as I struggled with how waste and violence were connected. Grandfather sat with me for an hour a day, as busy as he was. Waste is a violent action. When resources are low, people hoard. Those who are forced to do without may eventually strike out. Fighting occurs, he said. Did you want any of that when you threw away your pencil? I didn't. Is this why we spun? Why we made our own cloth? Grandfather suggested that I make a tree of violence, with violence as the trunk, and physical violence and passive violence, the kind that looks like it hurts no one, as the branches. Before you act, think how it would affect others, he said. Who would it hurt? You? Someone else? The earth? Does hurting the earth hurt us? Together, we created a tree and pasted it on the wall. Each day, I added my thoughts and actions to it. Grandfather would come by my hut and he'd watch my tree grow. When I wasn't sure where to place something, he helped me decide if the thought or action was passive violence or physical violence. As the monsoon rains renewed the earth, my tree grew and grew. Both branches were heavy with leaves, but the passive side became enormous. Soon, I could see how throwing away my pencil could hurt others. More graphite would need to be mined for a new pencil. Trees would be cut down. Land would be stripped bare. Villages would be lost. Were my wants, like the one for a new pencil, more important than the needs of others? I saw how kicking and shoving led to rioting. I saw how violence led to more violence, how wars led to more wars. Like the soaking rains that turned the musty earth lush and green, new growth finally sprouted in me. I was responsible for my every thought and action, yes, but I was also responsible for the thoughts and actions of the world. To change the world, I needed to change myself. As the rains trickled to an end and the sun returned, Grandfather took my hand. We walked amid the hustle of ashram life, new planting, chores, work, and prayer. Grandfather had a saying. He had said it to many, and now he said it to me. Be the change you wish to see in the world. And with Grandfather as an example of being the change for himself and others, I would. The end. Bye, guys.